Hello, my name is Natalie Brown and I will be presenting on ADHD. We're going to start with a patient case. Jackson is an 11 year old male. He comes to his physician's office with his mother for his yearly physical before starting the fifth grade. His mother expresses concerns about Jackson's recent behavior. He had to attend summer school so he wouldn't be held back. His mother is nervous for school to start since Jackson has trouble sitting still has had multiple outbursts in class and often fails to complete his schoolwork. She must remind him constantly of everyday tasks like brushing his teeth, and she also notes that he loses interest while reading or writing. So what is ADHD? ADHD is very common in children and is one of the most common neurodevelopmental disorders in kids. ADHD is commonly diagnosed in childhood and persists into adulthood. It is also more commonly diagnosed in boys than in girls with a ratio of two to one. So what is it like to have ADHD? For some children, they could find it difficult to concentrate or find themselves daydreaming, or some children can even get aggressive. ADHD can present as showing more hyperactivity syndromes, another type showing more inattentive symptoms, or it could be mixed. It also presents as distraction to external stimuli, trouble organizing tasks, difficulty getting along with others, excessive talking, and difficulty waiting turns. It is important that these symptoms occur before they are 12 years of age and are shown in two different settings, like at home and at school. Diagnosis, diagnosis involves multiple sources of school, parents, physician, psychologist. Common tests include the Vanderbilt or Connors rating scales. For treatment options, there is non-pharmacological treatment, stimulants, and non-stimulants. So there are multiple options available. Treatment options will vary on what is best for each child's needs. Goals of treatments are to improve impulsivity, hyperactivity, and inattentiveness. If a family does not think that medication is an appropriate route, non-pharmacological options like family-focused interventions can be used. Family-focused interventions use behavioral parent training for parents to implement in the child's life. This includes behavior modification for the parents to implement at home. This includes things like positive reinforcement, taking away rewards when negative behaviors are present, and using timeouts. According to the American Academy of Pediatric, first-line therapy for ages 4 to 5 is non-pharmacological treatment. And for ages 6 to 18, it would use stimul stimulants like methamphetamine or amphetamine products. Second line therapy for ages 4 to 5 is methamphetamine. And for ages 6 to 18 is atomexetine, guanifacine, or clonidine. These are non-stimulant options. The goal of treatment is to improve attentiveness, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. With all these different medications comes different formulations. There is short-acting formulations, which include immediate release products, which are given at least twice a day, once in the morning, and then again in the afternoon. These medications have a short onset, but a less duration of accent, action. This formulation is better for shorter hours of attention. There is then long-acting formulations, which include extended release formulations and this is given once a day and has two peaks of concentration. This means that this formulation has some effect shortly after it is taken and then exhibits another effect later in the afternoon. This formulation provides an effect for a longer time with only one pill being taken. There is also a patch formulation which is available. The patch is a transdermal system that is to be worn on the hip the patch has a nine hour application duration and the patch should be applied to a clean, dry, non-irritated portion of the skin. The patch needs to be applied two hours before the desired effect is needed. Common side effects of ADHD medications are relatively similar. For stimulants, this can include a decrease in appetite, insomnia, GI upset, irritability, 
headaches, and then hypotension or hypertension. For non-stimulants, side effects can include abdominal pain, hallucinations, suicidal ideation, somnolence, and dry mouth. So to manage these side effects, there is some important factors, which include proper nutrition, morning dosing, twice a day dosing, or using a different formulation. One of the most common side effects is a decrease in appetite, which can also lead to weight loss. This side effect has its biggest effect during lunchtime when the medication is at its peak. It is important to ensure that a proper nutrition is being obtained. To help with this, it is essential to eat a high calorie meal for breakfast and then again at dinner. To manage insomnia, it is important to make sure that the medication is not being taken at night. If the insomnia persists, over-the-counter medications like melatonin or diphenhydramine or Benadryl can be used. If headaches are present, a lower dose may be required or dividing the dose into once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Over-the-counter analgesics can be get, given to help as well. If side effects persist or intolerable, switching medication or formulations may be best. Multiple dosing formulations allow management of symptoms throughout the day. So some patient counseling points to know are medications like stimulants are scheduled to drugs and require a new prescription every time. These drugs are also highly monitored. It's, an appro it's important to take the medication at an appropriate time. So this would include starting the dose one hour before it's needed or before school starts. And if a second dose is needed in the afternoon, avoid taking it beyond 2 p.m. to avoid insomnia later in the night. Drug interactions to watch for are with some SSRIs or SNRIs, MAOIs, proton pump inhibitors, opioids, and other stimulants. It is also important to use caution when using these medications with certain heart conditions, bipolar disorder, if there's a history of seizures, tics, or if the patient previously has hypertension. So back to our patient case, what would be appropriate for Jackson? It would be appropriate to diagnose him with ADHD since Jackson shows multiple signs like the inability to sit still, trouble concentrating, and has multiple outbursts in class. These symptoms occur both at home and at school. It would also be appropriate to start treatment for his ADHD. After talking with his parents, it would be decided if they would like to choose a pharmacological or non-pharmacological option. If they choose pharmacological treatment, he could be started on methylphenidate. If he had a hard time taking pills or is reluctant to, he could be switched to the patch formulation of methylphenidate. It would be important to tell his mother that the patch can have an effect for up to two hours after the patch is removed and that skin irritation may occur. It would also be important for his mother to monitor any side effects he may be having and follow up with his doctor within a month. His follow-up appointment would include assessment of his appetite, blood pressure, heart rate, height, and weight. The importance of not sharing your ADHD medication. According to a study in Substance Abuse Treatment Prevention and Policy, non-medical use of ADH drugs is on the rise. This is especially prevalent in college students. College students feel the pressure to do well in school and turn to unprescribed stimulants to help. According to the National Survey on Drug Use and Health, almost 90% of students who abuse Adderall also binge drink alcohol. When using alcohol and Adderall together, the effects of both become perceived as less intense. This can make it easier to potentially overdose and can include side effects like seizures. Stimulants are scheduled to drugs because they have a high risk for addiction and abuse. Taking your friend's Adderall just to study for this one exam or finish this paper can potentially lead to an addiction. Drugs like Adderall and Ritalin can cause an increase in heart rate, blood pressure, and even blood glucose. This can be potentially dangerous if you have a previous medical condition. These drugs also cause a decrease in ap appetite and can cause insomnia when your body 
just needs to sleep. <laughs>